I realized, well, I had seen a fair bit of Asia. I had seen a little bit of Africa, but I had never been in the New World. I had never been in South or Central America. So I flew to Panama City and went to Barro Colorado Island, which is a beautiful island in Lake Gatun in Central Panama and is the principal field station of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. And I got very interested in this flower. This is the flower of a tree called the balsa tree. And this very fast-growing pioneer attracts its pollinators by offering insane amounts of nectar, about two ounces. So what happens if nobody messes with this? This is in the late afternoon. This flower opens. It takes about two hours. But oftentimes, naughty monkeys mess with it. And <laughs> because there's already some nectar in in the afternoon. So rather than waiting for it to open, they pry it open, drink the nectar, often in the process, destroy the flower. So that's not a good thing for the tree, but they can't do much about it. And others take advantage of that. So once the flower is open, still in the daytime, in the afternoon, there's two wasps having a conversation about who should actually drink that nectar. There's birds. This is a yellow rumped cacique taking off from one of these flowers. It's a big flower. It's about the size of a big beer glass. So this is a tiny hummingbird. He can't really come from top because he, he would get trapped in there. So he pokes its beak between two petals and sucks it from the side. Of course, that attracts predators, like there's a boa hoping for me, probably more for a bat, because there's bats that come later and later. There's bees coming. So everybody comes because it's a huge amount of pollen and it's a massive amount of nectar. And each flower is only open for one night. Then right at nightfall, the night shift starts coming in. And this here is a woolly opossum. It's a tiny guy, like a half pound. And they come very early. They come right in the moment it becomes dark enough so they're not seen by raptors. They start coming out. And the reason why they are so energetic about being free uh, early is that about 45 minutes later, the next bigger guys come in and they kick them out. So they have about 45 minutes to drink as much as they can. And they do. And, they <laughs> and here you get an idea of just how much nectar is in there. It's, a, it's like a lake. And they're very enthusiastic about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the next meanie guy. So this is a common possum. And they are not so friendly. And they're about four times the size. So they now come in. They kick the little guys out. Bats come often not very gracefully. They kind of pancake on top of the flower and <laughs> drink some, and then they fly off again. And then there's the kinkichu, and that appears to be the main pollinator in that area. Some very shy things came too. This is a night monkey, an owl monkey. And the reason why that is black and white is because they were really, really nervous. So this is taken, like many of the photos, I was not there. It was, they were taken with a remote camera that I set up and then push the button from quite a distance with binoculars. So this one, we even needed to take the whole visible light aspect out of it. And we used a modified camera that could see in the infrared. And we used light like flashes where we blocked all the visible light. So all you saw coming out was like, like from your remote on the TV. So this is a photo taken entirely without visible light. <laughs> 